Welcome to KeyboardBlues.com. This is chapters four and five from Blues for Piano and Keyboard. Now you've got your left hand working. Now let's work on your right hand. Guess what? We're going to use our old buddies again. Fifths, sixths, and sevenths. This time, however, the dominant seventh is going to be on the bottom. Now I can hear you saying, what? The seventh can be on the bottom, can it? Of course it can. For instance, the dominant seventh of C major is a B flat. But there are lots of B flats on the keyboard. With your right hand, simply play any old B flat with your thumb and then play the third and the fifth of C major above that. You've got to get used to the notion that you can spread the notes of a chord out anywhere you want on the keyboard. This is what's meant by the term voicing a chord. In our original course titled Pattern Piano and Keyboard, we studied how you can take the notes of any chord and learn to voice them on the keyboard. Then we learned to play these voicings in rhythmic patterns, effectively giving you a powerful music vocabulary that you can use to play any song by ear. Let me cover one more bit. You're going to hear me talk about a blues trick that involves sliding a chord from minor to major. Now I know I say this a lot, but if you went through pattern, piano, and keyboard, you'd know how to change a chord from minor to major. Here it is. To change a chord from minor to major, simply raise the third of the chord one half step, or move it up to the very next note. Let's begin with the first chord in the blues, which is C. Now we're going to do a voicing, remember. We're going to put the dominant seventh on the bottom using your thumb. Or rather, using my thumb. But I'm hoping you're using your own thumb. Then I'm bypassing the root of the chord, which is C. Instead, I'll jump right up to the third and the fifth. So this is really an incomplete voicing at this point. But the left hand will be playing a C. So that's one of the great things about learning to voice chords. They get opened up and they have much fuller sounds as you spread those notes all around the keyboard. So we've got this nice right hand voicing, minus the root. But like I said, the left hand's going to pick the slack up. It's going to play that root down here. Look at this nice open voicing. This is how you get really rich sounds out of the keyboard. Now, typically, that C chord with the seventh would be played like this. And no disrespect to that. There are many occasions where you want to do that, but this isn't one of them. We want to use a nice open voicing. Now when you add what we've learned in the blues in the last chapter, you already have the sound of the blues. You might be able to get a gig just doing this, but don't do that yet. I've got some more ideas to give you. Now we're going to add some more spice. We've got the foundations and we want to add some of the spice that really makes it come alive. Let's take a look at that first chord C. Now I'm tossing the seventh at this point. I'm just going back to the C triad, the root, the third, and the fifth. And since you went through pattern, piano, and keyboard already, you know the difference between C and C minor is just the difference of a half step on the third, right? C minor, C major, C minor, C major. Pretty easy. Just remember, when you say C minor, that minor only relates to the third. Same goes for C7 or C minor 7. It's just a difference of a half step on the third. So what I'm going to have you do now, every time we play a chord in the 12-bar blues, I'm going to have you first play its minor version, right? Like C minor 7. And then using the same finger, just slide that third up a half step to C7. It's a very simple technique. Here's what it looks like if you play it over F. Right? It's exactly the same over F. Here's G. Now we're going to use this very simple technique and play through the 12-bar blues again. And you'll be amazed how this simple little minor to major slide suddenly adds real life and character to the music. Check it out. All right, here we go. Here's C. And up to F. And back to C. Can you hear the slide from minor to major? Blues singers do this with their voices. Booty. Oh yeah, I've got the blues 
way down to my shoes. That's a nice little blues trick. Now we're going to put it all together. Some left hand rhythm with some yum yum right hand spice. In the upcoming video, you'll hear me referring to whole steps and half steps. Whole steps and half steps are the main building blocks of scale and chord construction. For a more in depth study on whole steps and half steps, go through the course titled Pattern, Piano, and Keyboard. You can find it at playpianotoday.com. One last bit of music trivia. In the upcoming video, you'll hear me talk about moving one of the blues riffs up an octave. For more detailed studies in octaves and other foundational musical techniques, you really need to go through the course titled Pattern, Piano, and Keyboard. Again, you can find it at playpianotoday.com. Let's move on now to a blues riff that's been tried and true down through the years, and it's built on everything we've learned so far. Here it is. Now, since you're a fan of the blues, you've probably heard that keyboard riff maybe a million times in jazz, blues, gospel, and country music. Let's study how to play it. I simply play the first voicing of C that we learned, and then the top note goes up a whole step, and the middle note goes up a half step, and the bottom note goes up a whole step, and then it slides back to the original. So the whole thing sounds like this. Now look at the illustration I have there. The top note goes up a whole step, the middle note goes up a half step, and the bottom note goes up a whole step, and then back. All within the first four beats of C, like this. Now in F, it sounds like this. And in G, it sounds like this. Just remember, the top note goes up a whole step, the middle note goes up a half step, and the bottom, or the dominant seventh note, goes up a whole step and then it slides back. Now if you want to go deeper and have an in-depth study of how all these whole steps and half steps fit together to create chords so that you'll understand how music itself is constructed, dig into the course titled Pattern Piano and Keyboard found at playpianotoday.com. You know, I know I keep talking about that, but I'm really not ashamed to advertise it because it's been helpful to literally hundreds of thousands of students around the world. Now, I know in this chapter we're dealing with the right hand primarily, but just in case you want to push that envelope a little bit with both your hands, I want to throw you a little extra bone for your left hand. Now, in the last chapter, we dealt with playing fifths, sixths, and sevenths for each beat of the 12 bar blues. Now, do you notice my pinky is repeating that root every time? And that's how I taught it to you. Now, that's a great way to start with the left hand. But if you want to throw in something more, you can do what I do a lot. It's called the rhythmic kicker. Check this out. See the index finger? It's throwing that extra note in between each beat. And the pinky is just sitting and holding, right? So you've got a couple different options now in your left hand. But remember, you don't have to throw the new rhythmic kicker in right away, okay? All right, let's go back to what we're studying in this chapter, this new right hand blues riff. And we're going to play it through the 12 bar blues, starting on C. Tf, back to C. Second line, here's F. It's nice. Last line is G, is F. All right, let's break it loose. All right, that's a little outside of the script, but the extra funky notes at the end will be covered in upcoming chapters. Stick with me. If you'd like to see more, come on over to KeyboardBlues.com. In this website, there's a wealth of online piano and keyboard lessons that you can dig into right away, including this lesson.